What is up, baby? We back. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go into detail about Hubba Bubba and how it marketed itself to becoming a cultural phenomenon in the early 2000s. So the 1970s were a different time. Filled with booze, bell bottoms, and the rise of disco, it was an era full of economic struggle and cultural yeah, change. Baby, yeah. But marketing and the way business was to be done was on the verge of changing forever. At this time, the chewing gum market was still completely up for grabs, with a few giants, Wrigley's, Bubblicious, and Tops fighting for complete dominance. And in such a competitive market, something drastic had to be done. Today, Wrigley's chewing gum completely dominates, owning 35% of the total addressable market. Tops, meanwhile, is non-existent. So how did this happen? Well, while it may not be the only reason, today I wanted to make the case that Wrigley's as a company was much better at marketing. For one million dollars. And that being the reason why they were able to maintain market dominance for so long. Using one product, Hubba Bubba, the certified childhood banger and an absolute classic. Hubba Bubba first hit the shelves in 1978, and its first marketing strategy revolved around its unique selling proposition. It came out with the slogan, Big Bubbles, No Troubles, as a way to differentiate itself from the other players in the market. The goal was to display how unsticky the gum was, so you could continuously use it to blow bubbles. And while this helped establish the brand in the early days, it was the drastic decision made by the marketing and product team in 1988 that really set the foundations for Hubba Bubba's good fortunes. Take a look at what gum packages looked like throughout the 80s and 90s. They were all the same. They all had the same shape, same taste, and same design. When Wiggly's analyzed the market, they understood one fundamental point. Marketing is about standing out against the noise, standing out amongst the competition. And so they interpreted this and opted for something bold, a change in design. They came out with the idea of bubble tape. Bubble tape at the time was super unique. It was fun and a new way to create gum. And that brings us to, the, to our first marketing lesson. One of the fundamental aspects of super successful companies is that marketing is built into the product. Think of Apple and how its clean, sleek design was meant to evoke specific emotions in its customers, things like success and ease of use. Now think about Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape. In a chewing gum world dominated by squares, it came out with this large circular cartridge. Its design is literally that of a mini tape dispenser. Instead of individually wrapped gum pieces, you have this one long continuous bubble gum that can be dispensed at will. Couple that with the slogan, six feet of gum, six feet of fun. And you can see how this marketing copy was directed at a specific audience. The color, font, and grip are all meant to target kids individuals between the ages of 6 and 14. This matches well with the cartridge's design, making it look like a toy, something you can almost play with. These changes in design, both from a product and cartridge standpoint, created the intended results Wrigley's was looking for. In 2004, when Hubba Bubba returned to the States, fresh off the bat with a new marketing strategy, Wrigley's was doing about a million a week in sales, just for the Hubba Bubba tape line. Using the foundations built off the early 90s, they used commercials to sell wacky short cartoons to really build the presence globally. Take a look at some early examples here. Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape. That's six feet of gum, six feet of fun. Right away, notice the animation, colors, and location. All are designed to clearly target kids in a brand branding in a way that came across as memorable. First, the animation clearly demonstrates the design and shape of the packaging, exaggerating the amount in a humorful way to make it almost memorable. And finally, the commercial ends off with the slogan. Again, six feet of gum, six feet of fun. Let's take a look at another one. <laughs> Bubba Bubba Bubble Tape. Now available in new cotton candy. That Again, notice the sounds. The effects, circus, and characters are all meant to target the same demographic. The screen is packed with movement and noises to maintain the short intention span of the kids they're targeting. While these are by no means marketing innovations, they got the job done for what was needed at the time. I want you to also pay attention to the choice of colors. If a mint flavor was chosen, that would appeal more to an older individuals who wanted something less. 
Instead, Hubba Bubba designed its flavors with things like cotton candy or triple berry or gushing grape, all flavors deliberately picked and designed to attract kids. When it comes to marketing, oftentimes people think about it from a traditional perspective. It's about ads, it's about the messaging, it's about the leads generated and blah, 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 blah. But marketing is so much more than that. It's about the product. It's about how it's positioned, how you design it, the values you give people, what emotions you're trying to create, generating buzz and attracting people all the same. This can be accomplished in so many different ways, but one of the best methods out there is guerrilla marketing. This is when companies use unconventional tactics in order to promote their product or service. Take a look at this corporate partnership established between Hubba Bubba and a German lingerie company, Triumph, sometime in the early 2000s, where they teamed up to create a unique way to give their ads a bit more flair. Models on billboards in lingerie all around Germany had Hubba Bubble bubbles plastered all over their faces to make it seem like they were chewing gum. Everywhere people went in Germany, they saw this ad campaign where there was like these super attractive models blowing bubble gums. And the strategy worked, creating the desired effect Wiggly's was looking for. Buzz around the product, people talking about it, and word of mouth. But in the return launch to America in 2004, Wiggly's did something similar. They created a corporate partnership with Nintendo, a gaming company that was at the top of the gaming industry at the time. It was a partnered giveaway where fans who bought Hubba Bubba also got entered into a raffle where they could win a Game Boy Advance or a Nintendo GameCube. Take a look at the commercial re released in 2005 or the magazines released to build the hype. Brand partnerships are a great way of establishing brand awareness with a much lower level of financial risk. And a successful collaboration not only gets your brand in front of new audiences, but it also strengthens your brand's reputation in the mind of your existing customers. While Hubba Bubba is no longer the gum brand they used to be by any means, they are a good example of how Blue Ocean strategy can be utilized to get your brand off the ground.